You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A thought just came to me right now while I was reading this. I think it's a, a human, very human thing, and probably between spouses, maybe happens. I don't have that experience. <laughs> but uh, do you love me? How I prove to me you love me in a kind of thing. You can't prove that you love you. You can try to prove, or you, but you can't demand to be proved. But maybe we do. Maybe people ask, they want to be loved. People are sad if they don't get likes on their posts in the social media. They want likes. They want to be approved. We, we crave approval. We crave appreciation. And if it's lacking from some people from whom we expect it, we feel um, a failure. We feel sad. So th- we're in a very human context here. But there's a lot of backdrop here. Uh, if, if you need a little reminder, at, just before Jesus died, Peter denied him three times. But a bigger backdrop to that act was a little earlier at the Last Supper. And Peter said, even if they all leave you, I will not leave you. And Jesus said, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me thrice, three times. So it's about fidelity of friends. And Peter had a very important role. His role was of leadership and responsibility. And Jesus says to him, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. This is biblical language. The shepherd, the shepherds of Israel, the kings were called shepherds. The high priest was a shepherd of the people. Moses was a shepherd of the people through the desert. Joshua was a shepherd of the people leading the men. That imagery of the the shepherd and the sheep. So he has a role. He's not just one of the apostles. He has the leadership role and he had denied Jesus three times. And Jesus doesn't want to dump him. He wants to redeem him. And this is the whole logic of the entire biblical story. It's a story of redeeming. And first of all, redeeming a people through whom then this blessing would reach all of humanity. And so the logic that's happening in here is marvelous. And there's a very strong connection between both readings because in the, in the um, first reading we had from the Acts of the Apostles, We're with Paul over in the prison in Caesarea, Caesarea, on the Mediterranean coast. And Festus is the new governor who has just arrived. And what happens? Well, the king comes, King Agrippa, and his wife Bernice. And there's actually a Mount Bernice, I'm not sure if it's named after her, here in Tiberias. And, And there's a huge connection here because Festus is appointed by Tiberius. 
No, it's by Claudius. And who appointed Claudius? Well, obviously the Praetorian Guard after they killed Caligula, or who's before, before Claudius. And Claudius would not have become emperor were it not for Herod Agrippa, who encouraged him to accept, because they were, since they were ch children playing together, they had a great friendship, and Herod Agrippa's um, encouragement was very important. He probably said to him, Duke in Altum, go out into the deep, because uh, Claudius was not the type to be in administration, and he accepted to be emperor. It was the Praetorian Guard wanted to rule and have him as a figurehead. And then, so both Festus and Agrippa are there because of uh, Claudius, the emperor. And when Jesus is saying to Peter, you're going to have your hands tied and be taken where you don't want to go, the innuendo of the final statement that we just read implies that that's his death, a crucifixion. So where did that happen? Also under Nero, the emperor Nero. And I find both of these scenes very interesting because they're also placed in another context through the psalm, Psalm 103, Tehillim. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and he's way above all the emperors. And in that sense, then the believers in God have an extraordinary source of strength and serenity as the emperors play their games, as the kings play their will, as leaders do their pushing and shoving, and you have the small peons uh, down below that are kicked around, but actually, no. Jesus said, if you hurt one of those, you hurt me. The identity of God with his people. He is with us, Emmanuel, always walking with us. God with us. And uh, this is extraordinary. This is not in any of the mythologies. The mythologies are all projections of human passions and weaknesses and revenges and battles and romances and all the, the passions of the confusion of the human heart and will and the thirst for power. And the God of the Bible is a God of self-giving who comes down with his people, who cons is concerned about his people, who brings his people out. They suffer punishment because of their waywardness, but God loves them and wants to bring them back. This is an extraordinary vision of the divinity, an extraordinary understanding. And then in those of us who accept Jesus uh, uh, with a full faith perspective, we see then that God took us so seriously that he went through all of this so that we could become full of the Holy Spirit, which we celebrate on Sunday, that God wants to live in us as temples. And this also idea was emerging in the second temple period where the, the whole crisis of the temple worship and that eventually the, the human being is the temple of God. They destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days, Jesus said, referring to the resurrection. But then uh, Paul's uh, writings are so clear, you are the temple of God. We have an extraordinary mystery here of how the human being, so small at the whim of emperors and persecutors, is nevertheless filled with God and united to God and is able to go through and give witness to the greatness and love of God. What a vocation we all have to ponder that we are not just the playthings of circumstances. We are intimately involved with God because he chose to be intimately involved with us. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.